Hello and welcome back to more AEW and TEW 2020. We are here in the uh, second week of May on our Rampage, but this time on a Sunday. This is our special Mother's Day show where every match is a women's match. I don't like how many people that is. We start off with Hikaru Shida defeating Ham's Kitana with Imagino Ichigeki. Uh, after the match, the VIPs club come out to ringside. They're very angry at Ham's. And they say that what she's done is an affront to the VIPs club. To that end, the two of them are going to embarrass Hams, they're going to beat Hams up, they're going to do everything to Hams that they can. So they start making their way to the ring, but she just steps in between the two, so I'm imagining uh, Hams, middle of the ring. Sheeta is, like, between Hams and the ropes. VIPs are outside of it. It's like, alright, no, what, fine, we're not gonna deal with- we're not gonna mess with Sheeta. So, no issues there. After this, we see Paul Heyman in his office, and he says, Well, this show is all women for the matches. I did say I would have a few announcements. At least one announcement. But I think this is one that's still in line with the show, is I would like to introduce my new personal client in AEW, making her way from the UFC, Paige Van Zandt. Okay. Paige Van Zandt, uh, she is a UFC fighter. Bring her in. She's hot, so... Shotzi Blackheart then defeats Ashley Flair, and she immediately runs to ringside, she gets in the tank, uh, that the Queen, so, like, the Queen's Court had brought the tank to ringside, you know, with the intention of destroying it after Ashley Flair wins, she loses, the Court attend to Flair, Shotzi drives her tank out of the arena, she's happy. This show is going to be rated horribly, by the way, uh, this show's gonna suck. Uh, after this, Paige Van Zandt is seen walking around the backstage area, escorted by Paul Heyman, getting a feel for the new company, seeing what the backstage is like. And she's approached by Layla Hirsch and Kurt Angle. Kurt talks to Heyman and says that Layla's been looking for a real challenge. Someone like Paige Van Zandt could use a good introduction into AEW with a legit fighter, such as Layla Hirsch. Heyman's like, hey Paige, do you want to do this? And she accepts, making fun of Layla's height. Uh, Paige Van Zandt, not exactly the tallest herself. But Layla Hirsch also is four foot eleven, so yeah, short enough for me. Kana then defeats Abaddon, the Billiken. Very very nice. Uh, after this, Brody Lee sits in an empty, slightly disheveled office and says, "Jeff Hardy, what are you doing with your career? I mean, you're a legend. You've been a legend in your career, and you're wasting it away doing nothing." You're collecting a paycheck for doing nothing, for sitting backstage and catering, sitting at home with your brother and his broken body, and you're still getting all the praise and admiration. You don't care. You've coasted your entire career, you've lived your entire career out of sync with your work ethic. I've worked my ass off my entire career. I have worked time and time again, and I've been pushed down again and again and again. Even with how you accept my challenge, you think of me as an afterthought like everyone has my entire career while you've just coasted by and accepted what comes to you. I'm not content with just sitting by and letting things happen to me. I'm not just going to let you or anyone do this to me over and over and over again. Face me in person, man on man, Jeff Hardy. So Brody Lee going a little bit crazy. He's very pissed off that Jeff Hardy, someone who's never really had to work all that hard in order to be loved by everyone. He's, you know, he was super popular when he debuted. He's always been super popular, he's always been a draw, even with all the controversies that he's had. Uh, see also Victor Road 2011, which we've used in a storyline. Jeff Hardy's still been at the top of this game, while well, Brody Lee has always evolved himself, he's always worked hard, he's always gotten better, and people have just kind of forgotten about him. People just kind of don't care about him anymore. Out of this, Britt Baker defeats Big Swole. Oh my loudy, loudy, loudy. Oh my loud. That might save the show. Uh, MJF is then seen in a pre-recorded segment. After his loss in the debate, he's brought Rami and Kevin to a wrestling fan meetup. They're at a convention somewhere in Connecticut, I don't know where. He says that whoever gets the most visitors to their booth is victorious in the second non-wrestling contest. MJF does get a lot of visitors initially, but most people visit Rami and Kevin, understandably. They sign autographs, they take pictures with the fans. MJF is an asshole with fans, like people still take pictures with him. Uh, but he's flipping them off. He's 
being a general dickwad to them because it's MJF. When the timer on the tournament runs out, MJF, he has no one at his booth. He's like, he was getting a steady flow, but it was never like an overwhelming amount. While Sabe and Steen, they have a massive line waiting for them. And I'm just like, what, what the hell, guys? I'm not going to be one-upped by this. And it's because Rami and Kevin have no standards. They're going to accept all the hillbilly white trash, all of these terrible people, all of these trashy people who have no respect for themselves, who don't deserve any respect, and you're just accepting them into your life. Well, I have only the best of the best appreciating me. I only have true connoisseurs of pro wrestling appreciating me because I am like a fine wine. That only the real people come up while you guys are a cheap beer that everyone can pick up and enjoy until they've had something better, until they've tasted MJF. And Rami and Kimbe, uh, Rami, Sabay, and Kevin Steen just kind of ignore him. It's like, whatever, dude. Uh, Jordan Grace then defeats Killer Kelly. Shinsuke Nakamura is then interviewed by Trish Stratus. She asks about everything that Devitt has been doing with him, and he just says, Devitt, respect me. That's all it is. Respect me because I've been the best in pro wrestling while he never reached those heights. So, because he's never reached those heights, he doesn't have the rights to make terms of our challenge. Prince Devitt, you will take me on when I say I am ready. You don't get to dictate when I am ready. Pretty quick segment. Uh, okay, okay, Io defeats Chris Statlander, not a surprise there. AJ Styles is seen with a bullet club. So, so, John, we still can't seem to find each other in person at the right time. At least, you don't seem to want to meet me in person at the right time. At the, er, uh, meet me in person. Well, that's no issue. Both of us have problems with each other, and that's what matters. Now, double or nothing, the bullet club is going to already have a representative with Priscilla Kelly challenging for the women's title. It doesn't even matter who is against Priscilla Kelly is challenging, but there needs to be even more Bullet Club representation. John, you're the big match guy, although you're no big match John. So how's about we meet up in the ring once more a double or nothing? And this time, I'm not holding back. I'm going to bring it my all, and I'm going to show you that the Bullet Club can still stand strong. And in our main event, Kind of disappointing, honestly. I set that as an epic, um, for announcing, yeah, 69 rating, very disappointing, this is not going to be a good show, ooh! This isn't going to be a good show, I say it's our best rampage ever, it's because of the meetup, it's because of MJF, I'm not even going to lie about that. Uh, still, a uh, good show of Rampage. Very, very different to have only women's matches, which is the most atrocious thing in actual AEW, in real-world AEW. This could never be fathomed. Uh, but then again, you look at the roster, and it's mostly not people who are in AEW. You have, what, Chris Dallander, Jordan Gray, uh, Chris Dallander, DMD and Big Swole, Abaddon, who hasn't been seen in a while, I don't think, Sheeta. You have a couple people from WWE couple people elsewhere. It's not something that could actually happen, but I just want to show off the strength of my women's division. This is a good show. This is a good card. Um, that EO match was fantastic. I was expecting a little bit more out of Mayu and Utami. I was expecting like a 74-75, but Utami is not too well known. She's only at like 30-some pop, so I guess I'll take it. We'll move on to Dynamite as we make our way quickly towards Double or Nothing.